This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Care Notes with Doug Wilbur. And I think we're going to have a very interesting conversation about um, aging. And, you know, Doug, don't we start aging from the moment we're born? We do. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the first, you know, 20 years or so, or, you know, you're mostly building in, you know, building up you know, and getting growing and, and things. And then, you know, slowly but surely the, uh, the, um, the body starts going the other direction. And, you know, that's why I, you see people and, and they kind of heat, hit their athletic peak, um, you know, in their twenties. Um, and then, you know, after their, their twenties, it's really, you know, a, a, a downhill type of path that we tend to take. And, the, and there's many things we can do to stave off that, but, you know, they, there definitely is a, um, a path where, you know, we're not usually getting stronger unless we specifically are working to it, but our bodies aren't just naturally getting right. stronger. And exactly. Getting, yeah. Our eyesight start going, other things like that. So, um, and aging is definitely not for the faint of heart either. <laughs> and uh, because I think that, you know, with that aging, it's, it's kind of weirdly unexpected um, in that, uh, you know, so often I talk to people and, and they say, you know, I still feel like I did when I was 20 as far as who I am, right? But I, I, you know, I, I, my body isn't working that way, and I can't do the things that I could do before. But in our minds, we're still, you know, a a certain age. Sure. I don't know what that set age is, but I know that that you know most people sort of have that where they're they're not really seeing themselves as young. Um, the, the, I don't know if you've, did you ever go to a, a class reunion? Uh, I've been to a couple. Um, okay. And my elementary school group does oh, a class okay. reunion. So that sort of can be a little bit freaky. <laughs> yeah. I remember the, um, the first class reunion I went to was actually not mine. It was, um, you know, someone else's. And I remember thinking at the time, who are these older people, you know, these old people? Well, and, and it was, it was funny because, you know, they, it was my, my class, as far as, um, you know, the age that I was, I wasn't going with someone who was older. I was going with um, someone that, that was my age, you know, and, um, and it happened to be, you know, someone that I was dating at the time. And, um, and, and it was just, it was a kind of a surreal experience because again, my mind was in a different place. Right. And then when I went to my class reunion, um, that, that was someone's fifth. And so when I went to um, the, the 10th reunion of, that was my own class, I remember thinking, boy, everyone looks old. I, you know, <laughs> uh, of course Not I did, yeah, you know, right. but, but everyone else did, you know, <laughs> and, and it was, you know, it's, it, that's, kind of a funny experience and it is um and and i think it doesn't change as as you get older and older um you're still kind of not um expecting that people are you know are are your age and um you know they because they look older and we see this with um with older folks all the time like one of the complaints that people have about going into a nursing home is, oh, that's filled with all old these people. old people. Yep. Right. Yep. And so people don't want to go in because it's filled with all these old people. And, um, and yet they're the person that I'm talking to is one of these older people, right. you know, and, but they don't feel that way, you know, um, at least, um, at least in their head, they don't feel that way. Um, but I, I think that it's, it's really good to kind of put ourselves in someone that, say, is in their 80s 
um, their shoes and to think what is it that they're going through and what is it that they're thinking. Um, and, and, and just know that time has a way of catching up. Now, there's kind of two ways it catches up with people. Um, and this isn't meant to be depressing. It's just meant to be helping to understand. Sure, absolutely. Um, there are some people that actually enjoy very good health for a long period of time. And then at the end, they have a rapid decline. Um, and so they don't have a lot of, you know, of aches and pains or this and that that they go through. It's good, 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 bang. And, um, and in many ways, that may be the ideal way of, sure. of doing it, which is why there's that encouragement to do exercises, to eat right, to take care of your health, you know, take the medicines the way you're so, supposed to do all those things so that hopefully you're one of those people. Um, and then there are others that start suffering with multiple, with either a chronic condition <coughs> or multiple chronic conditions. And they're kind of aches and pains and this and that that happens can kind of go for a longer uh, and a long period of time. And, and the issue is that one thing tends to lead to another, to another, to another, which is a, a cascading type of effect. And, um, you know, as I, as I talk to people and have talked to literally thousands of people um, over the years um, who are were really trying to uncover and unravel what help they need and what part we may play in it. Um, you know, the the so often, you know, people just talk about how, you know, it's a real struggle to get old. But it starts, I think, because in our head, we still are are thinking in a young way, right. you know? Um, and, and all of us are surprised by the fact that we are, are um, suffering these things and going through these things. Um, and, and I think that's, um, it, it's, it's just kind of fascinating. Well, I um, think that's the difficult part when, you see your parent, your sibling, your friends going through something that, um, again, you're still feeling vital. You're still working. You're still doing all the things that you want to do, maybe not at the same pace you did 10, 15 years ago. But then you see somebody else struggling. And it's very difficult because I know for myself my mom was 96 and a half and she, I mean, she counted every half mark that was important for her. Um, <clears throat> but she was vital up until she had that stroke. And it was like, it was hard for me to look at her at first. It was like, but just two days ago, we talked on the phone and you told me you washed the floor. And when I got into her place, when I got there, it was sparkling clean because she had actually cleaned it. Yeah. Um, so it's very difficult. And even though I know knew her age, okay, <clears throat> nobody ever believed my mother was as old as she was, you know? So sometimes it's difficult for us because we're so connected that we don't yeah. see the little things that are happening around us. Yeah, no, no. I, I, um, and I think that... that um, the, the there's just something in my mind um, that I I actually um, you know am a person of faith and um, and you know I I think we were meant for something different and that's why I think our minds feel like we should be in a different place and that the world should be in a different way because I think you know we we're we we're created in a way that it was meant to be different sure. than it is, you know, and, um, and that, you know, that's just kind of a, a, my personal thing. So it, it fits in, you know, well, that, that people would feel this way because, you know, um, you know, 
because I think we were created for eternity, you know, and, um, um, but, but, you know, to go a different direction. Um, and that is, you know, how do we make it so that we're as good as we can be um, in this life <laughs> and, and try to, um, uh, try to remain um, in as, as good a place, like I said, where we're good, 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 and then the decline is rapid. Um, and, you know, um, and, and there are things that people can do to prevent, you know, that, that other piece, um, or to enhance is another way, um, the, the, a good life. Um, and, and I think as part of it is it starts with what I began with, which is that our minds say we can do certain things. Our bodies oftentimes say we can't. Part of the um, reasons our body says we can't is because we're not conditioning our bodies. We're not doing the right things. So you see a little child and naturally they're bouncing around, they're rolling on the floor, they're doing all these things. Well, I guarantee you, if you and I were to do the things that kids do naturally, that we would injure ourselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? And um, and but but the part of the reason they can do that is is because of the fact that they are doing it, that they've, you know, and the, if you can continue doing it, you're more likely. Now, there's also another part, which is they really do have more, they're more limber and other things. And it's not just through conditioning. Um, but, you know, I think someone like Tom Brady is a great example of how you can do certain things and stretch out your, um, your ability to perform at a high level or a higher level sure. um, for a longer period of time. And that's what we see sometimes with people as they're getting older, barring some sort of chronic condition that they have no control over. But many of the chronic conditions we do have control over. So if you don't smoke, you know, you're more likely in, uh, to not develop, say, COPD. Right. Um, if, um, or heart, heart disease, you know, or other things. If you eat, a, a, you know, food that is healthy for you, you're less likely to develop some of the chronic conditions. Um, if you take the medicines that your doctor has provided for you, I, I don't think people understand how pharmaceuticals has prolonged and enhanced um, uh, um, people's lives as right. they get older. You know, we hear a lot of negatives about pharm the pharmaceutical industry and, you know, how, how terrible they are. And, 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 you know, there are some arguments that you can make about it, but I can tell you this, that um, what the, the, what has been created largely through the pharmaceutical industry has revolutionized um, uh, care and, um, Absolutely. and, and, and has revolutionized. It's changed with the way doctors practice. There's so many things that, that we have now, and we have to see those things as a gift. Um, but I can tell you, I mean, I'll just give you an example. Um, one of the more, most common surgeries that used to be done, um, say back in the 30s or 40s, were surgeries for um, ulcers. And um, because people would have the, you know, the acid and it would right. burn right. holes in, uh, um, it, you know, and in their system. And, and so the doctors would do that well. Um, they created, you know, this class of medicines, the H2 blockers, and, um, and those aren't even the most advanced ones, but those alone revolutionized um, that because all of a sudden these surgeons were no longer needing to do that surgery. Right. It, it actually affected what procedures people were doing um, because of that. Well, why, 
you know, it, and it's so much better if you can take a pill um, then they have surgery to prevent something they have, yes. than to have surgery. And, you know, and at that time, the surgery was very invasive. Now we have less invasive procedures and other things. So, so it's amazing how that drug literally changed the, what, what doctors were doing on their day-to-day practice if they were a surgeon. And, and, you know, you can go into uh, like the invention of Lipitor and how that lowered cholesterol and the effect that that had on heart disease. And, you know, so there are so many things. So if people take their medicines and they take it faithfully, they're far less likely to have some of the issues right. that, um, you know, um, that, and, and the doctors are giving them to prevent some of those issues. So we have to understand, and that's why they say in, in part that, you know, um, you know, you, like, you know, 60 is the new 50 or 70 is the new 60 or whatever it was. Um, and, and, you know, it's true. It, it, and, and one big portion of that is the fact that, that the medicines you know, are there. And if we take them, it can make a difference. Oh, absolutely. You made a a statement before um, we started, and I thought it was interesting. You said something about how in the past when people were older, and I'll let you fill in the blanks, that that they acted differently. Well, I mean, I remember my grandparents. um, In fact, my grandmother died in her late 60s. Okay. And uh, she had a stroke and within two days she was gone. Um, but in her, if I look at the pictures of her, if I look at her with my <clears throat> brothers who are older than me before I was born, she looked like an old lady in right. her forties. Oh, yeah. Okay. She came from Europe. Um, in the beginning, she was really chic. I don't know when all that changed, but my recollection of her from the time I was born in the early fifties was she was an old, old lady. And I realized the other day she was 67 when she passed away. Um, and I'm 72 and I look in the mirror and go, I don't look anything like she did. Um, and, but things were different. You know, um, I remember hearing her tell her daughters when she needed things, you know, you know, Dorothy, go in the kitchen and and get me a cup of tea. I would never ask my son to do that for me. I mean, unless I was sick. But that was just what that generation did. And I saw my parents change. I saw my mother in her 60s change her whole wardrobe. Not to look like a teenager, but she wore jeans and she wore, you know, things that made her feel youthful. Um, and so that's what she sort of has taught me. And it's like, you know, enjoy the day, enjoy what you can do. Yes. There are still going to be some things that aren't as easy. Um, in fact, for those of you listening, uh, I have three bracelets that I wear on my arm and I had to take them off for a medical procedure. I could take them off. I could not put them back on. My my fingers just wouldn't work like they've worked in the past. And at first I was like, you know, what happened? You know, like this happened overnight. And then I realized it had, you know, each time I had taken them off and put them back on, it was harder. Um, but if we let those little things stop us from trying to do other things, then I could become as old as my grandmother overnight and you know, I just want to enjoy life. And, you know, there's, there's something to be said about both what was going on with, with our grandparents and how they acted and looked, because I remember the same thing, you know, as far as um, thinking about my grandparents and at the ages and thinking they were old. And, but, but, um, but I think there's also something that, um, you know, can be said that was positive about that, you know, that, that there was an acceptance of getting older. Right. That I think, and knowing, um, 
I have to be careful about certain things. And so, um, but I think there's something good about the youthful thing, which is, you know, but I still want to live life and I want to, um, to um, do the things that, that, um, that I can do. And I think, I think there, the balance is that you understand that there are some limitations and that you should be smart with it, but also that, you know, that shouldn't stop us. We just have right. to figure right. out ways around and, and things. So not only is doing the right thing from a health standpoint important, um, that young mindset I think is, is important for being able to, um, um, to kind of like um, approach the world with fascination and joy and learning and other things. I think those things are, are very, very important. Um, but the, there's also that awareness that I can't deny my, my right. age, you know, and I can't deny that my body is changing. What I can do is work with it to, to, to try to enhance, as I was saying before. So, you know, doing things like, as, as we mentioned, taking the medicines and doing the exercises and all those things play a huge role in, in you know, doing as well as we can. But then there has to come that also knowledge of, and this is what I, one of the things that I work with people when I go out there, I, you know, I said, we're trying to keep you, um, you know, in a place where you have independence, but independence doesn't mean you can't delegate. Independence means you're still making choices and you're still having a, a way of control. And, and I know we've talked about this before, but that's really important. To, Absolutely. To, and that distinction is huge. So for example, you know, um, crashes with older people happen a lot in their cars, accidents. It's because, you know, your eyes aren't working as well. And, you know, there um, maybe you have macular degeneration. Who knows? There can be a, a, a bunch of different things. Maybe your, your response time is not as good as it was before. And, and the ability to say, okay, I should not do that anymore. But ultimately, the reason that's a problem is because it cuts out your independence. Exactly. Um, or you feel like it would cut out your independence. So that what is the solution to that? Get a driver. You know, and that's, and that's one of the things that we try to do in home care is... is look through and say, what are the problems? And, you know, is this something that person can do? We don't want to take away from something they want to do and they're able to do it. And then um, let's, let's take those parts that are going to create risks where someone could, you know, hurt some, someone or hurt themselves or where they could fall and break a hip or do different things and then place a human being in there as a means of helping you through, um, you know, maybe driving or, um, you know, or having some assistance if, if you need some physical assistance for certain things. Sure. And, and the, the ideal is, yeah, you're still in control, but, but you're passing on those things. And I, I use this illustration all the time. I, I said, you know, I can still get up on my roof. It's, it, you know, and, and do different things. I don't think it's a real wise idea for me to do it. And so things like cleaning the leaves and in the gutters and stuff like that, when it's two stories high, right. you know, I, I, I just choose that. I'm not going to do that. Anymore. Exactly. You exactly. know, I'm going to pass that on, not because I couldn't probably get away with it. It's just the consequences. If, if something happened, would not only affect me, it would affect the company that I'm running and, right. you know, um, someone would have to care for me and there's things like that. So yeah, why not? If I can delegate it, 
why wouldn't I delegate it? Exactly. You know, it's interesting because um, my brother called me a couple of weeks ago and he starts out with, I want you to know I'm okay. And I was like, okay, that's sort of scary. Um, so he has a form of immaculate degeneration and he has to get an injection in his eye um, or both eyes uh, like every three months. Yeah. And for some reason he missed his three month and they called him and they said, are you all right? And so he came, he went in for it. Now he lives out in California and nothing is close by. Um, so this doctor's almost an hour drive, which for you and me would be 10 minutes, you know? Um, so he went in thinking he was going to have one eye taken care of. And so he could go by himself because he would have good enough vision in his other eye. But the doctor said, do both eyes. And the doctor said, just sit in the waiting room for 20 minutes. Then we'll tell you, we'll check your eyes and you should be able to drive. And they came out and my brother said, I really can't see well. They said, no, it's in your imagination. You really oh. can see well. And he said, well, I'm going to sit here for a little bit longer. Turns out they wanted to close the office. So they convinced him he was okay. And he got in his car and he said he was so thankful he knew what turns to make to get onto the freeway. Yeah. So now he's scaring me as he's telling the story. He went one exit on the freeway, shaking, thinking, I really can't see. He pulled off. He, he was in some neighborhood. He didn't even know where he was. Luckily, he called 911. And the police came. They helped him repark his car. They stayed with him till his wife could come pick him up. He said, that's the first time I allowed somebody to tell me I was okay when I knew I wasn't. And he's been talking to everyone about it. Like when you sense something is wrong, then react to what is wrong. Oh, and, yeah. You know, two days later, his eyes were, and it took almost two days. And two days later, he said his eyes were fine. Uh, he decided to walk around his complex before he even got in his car. Um, and so, again, those are things that sometimes we depend on others to tell us if we can do things. And right. that's sort of scary. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, um, Molly, our nurse, tells a story about a patient that she had one, one time and how this nur uh, this patient all the signs were were you know right and hopefully i'm telling the story right that you know she looked at the vitals she looked at you know monitors everything was right she said except for there was this one little tiny blip for a second but it made her wonder you know what was that blip you know and um there, the, um, the, there were some other things that were tied in with that. And she just, you know, she called the doctor and said, look, I don't know what's going on because there's no signs that you, this person looks, you know, perfect as far as the vitals other than that little thing. And she just had this gut thing that there was something that wasn't right. Can't explain it. It, you know, as far as it, she just had that, yep. that sense. And um, so the doctor, um, you know, decided that they were going to do something as far as so. Um, and literally, as soon as the doctor, I, I think, walked away, if again, I'm telling someone else's story, um, this patient crashed. And, and, um, and, you know, the, the, um, the long and the short of it is in agreement that sometimes when you have a sense that something isn't right, whether it be personally or with someone else, um, it's wise to act on that because, you know, you may be dead on right. And, and you know, I don't usually hear people tell these stories and then end with, and it was nothing. You know? yeah. I mean, now, now there are times where I know people have high anxiety and so they worry about things that they sure. shouldn't but that isn't really what I'm talking about here there's this this other thing that sometimes um, people get that um, that isn't can't necessarily be explained by you know just being an anxious person or having exactly. issues with anxiety exactly
and and so in the end you know the 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 things that we can control are the things that we should control absolutely and, and work towards it the the hardest part i think in all of this is how do we do that you know because especially um you know with things that are changes you know where you have to change your lifestyle and if if change was easy everybody would be doing it right and exactly. they wouldn't have the same you know quirks and habits and and issues for a large part of their life and um and you know that that's that's probably subject for a whole different um uh podcast um but but you know because the whole way that people change it really is interesting i don't know if you've ever thought why why can you go and deal with something for many many years and then all of a sudden suddenly be able to change that thing um and you know even though you may have struggled with it for 30 years or 20 years or whatever and in it feels like almost a moment you're able to change that thing and and there is a reason why people do that and um and we can talk about some of the theories around that that'll but, be interesting absolutely yeah but but change is going to be a part of this which means that we make the decisions that are right for us and then we act on those those good decisions so that and, we have a good life and that's so. giving ourselves a gift and that's what many of us you know don't realize um and in the last couple of years working with a number of coaches i've realized when you at least acknowledge something and find a different way of doing it um that's a gift that you're giving to yourself and so like i said when i went to put those bracelets on and i was having a difficult time uh, my first reaction was oh my god what else is going to go wrong but then i thought okay I'll figure out a way to do it. And if I can't do it, well, then either I'm not going to wear them or somebody else can help me with them. And just those little things, you know, can make things much better for you, but it is different. It yeah, I, I, I'll uh, like to kind of wrap up with one thing. One of the things that I've seen, you know, there, there are other factors involved like community and being a part of something bigger than yourself is important. Having close friends, you know, one of the things I've found for people that live well and and for long is, and and as people get older, they tend to lose their friends one by one, especially if they make it to a you know a pretty good age. And I just read, I had a, I saw a friend of mine on Facebook who's you know, older than me, um, said that, he said, I think a full 20% of my Facebook friends are deceased. And, oh, wow. and, you know, so, but they kind of still, you yeah. know, <laughs> live on in Facebook land. Um, and, uh, and, but, but I think it's interesting because one of the things that I found over the years is, there are kind of the, one of the most important things is when someone continues to build friendships with people that are younger than them, that they just don't stick with their friends that are their age, but they continue developing relationships and, and, you know, with folks that are younger and, um, and it really does make a difference. And I've seen that over and over and over again in people, especially those that live longer. In, in many cases um, that, that that's been the case and, is, and also those who live happier um, and that, that they've built a community and they continue to build a community by continuing to develop relationships. I love that. Yeah, so um, would kind of like to end with that thought as, um, as you know, um, a part of living life and and knowing that you know aging isn't for the faint of heart, we have to still be doing a lot of the good work as we get older, and realize that we're also going to have to deal with some of the the new nuisances of Absolutely. getting older. So, well, thank you.
Well, thank you. And we'll get together again next month. Have a great right. day. Bye-bye Sounds now. Sounds good. Thanks.